Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Hasbunallah wa Nim al Wakil. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? And yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Assalamu alaikum. It's Friday. Welcome to Johnny's Bite. Juma Mubarak to all our Muslim brothers and sisters. When you pray for yourself and your family and your friends, pray for Ghana and whisper a prayer for me and my family as well. This morning, I want to go back to something we did yesterday where we showed you how we are now told is a boom vehicle of the electricity company of Ghana somewhere around the Yamransa area where fuel was being siphoned. Siphoned, sorry, from the official vehicle. And I gave the car number out and all of that. Well, ECG has put out the statement and they have encouraged all of us to also be um, interested in trying to fight crime. It's very important that we all do because I always say that it is not just the politicians who are the problem. Sometimes we, the people who also go and beg for jobs, the people who are civil servants, we are also part of the problem. Because if it were not so, how do you have people who have retired or reached the age of retirement and have refused to go? I'm told that the two um, old citizens at Goyle have decided that by the close of the year they will leave because I was going to put the pictures up. But I'm told that they have decided that they will leave at the end of the year, even though they have gone past 60. So we are waiting. And I want to congratulate them for taking that bold decision to leave. We cannot live in a country where young people cannot find jobs to do and then old people have contract extensions. It cannot happen. And that is why when you have a board chairman say, we went to the president to say to the president that we couldn't find anybody else who was suitable and who is suitable and that we have given a contract extension. I find it very, very pathetic. When the, the campaigns are going to start for 2024, it is the young people we are going to be using to crisscross the whole country. Are they going to be doing that on an empty stomach? I doubt. So when you starve the young people and you press them down, as a down presser man like the Rasta folks will say, and you make their lives difficult, how do you expect things to move for them? Please put up the statement from the electricity company of Ghana, ECG. That's following the story we put out there. So this week, keep, on re keep it on record that we have been to the Valco, where as a result of let the retirees go and let the young grow, there's a new management at Valco. And because of that, they have a new union building built for them, put up for them. And that's the essence of let the retirees go and let the young grow. This is from the Electricity Company of Ghana. It is dated the 14th of December, and it is for immediate release. The press statement, um, siphoning of fuel, the management of ECG's attention has been drawn to a TV3 publication. ECG, it is a 3FM 92.7 publication. It is not a TV3 publication, but it's just simulcast on TV3. But originally, it is a 3FM 92.7 publication. Please note that we are in town. A viral video showing the siphoning um, of fuel from an ECG boom truck. The staff involved in the alleged siphoning of the fuel from the ECG boom truck with registration number GV247414 has been identified as a driver stationed at the regional office of ECG in Cape Coast. So we were not wrong. All a full-scale investigation has commenced in line with our disciplinary procedure. We take this opportunity to thank TV3. You are thanking 3FM actually, 92.7, not TV3 and wish to encourage the general public to report any wrongdoing by our staff via our call center and WhatsApp line 302 -611 -611. Thank you. And William Boatin, Director of Communications, puts his number there. Well, 611 -611, please, ECG, it's time for you to make it a toll-free number because now we're going to spend our money to tell you what your people are doing wrong and, and which places people are, are doing illegal connection. No, make it toll-free. But this is an acknowledgement from ECG. And I like the swift nature. 
just so you know, just this week, we have been to that same Yamransa place about three times already. We have showed you how fuel is being siphoned in other ways, not from just an ECG track. And I don't know which other institutions come there to also siphon their fuel and go and tell their employers that there's no fuel in the vehicle. But it tells you, ECG has quickly responded to it. Lawyer Dubik Mahama and your team, good morning to you. Lawyer Fred Bimbil Johnson and uh, Enu Singh and all the guys at ECG, good morning to you. See how quickly they responded to this? I was expecting the National Petroleum Authority to also respond to what the siphoning of fuel. I was expecting the Ghana Standards Authority to also respond to it, the first one we showed, not the one regarding ECG. But they have all been quiet. It tells you what is of interest to our state institutions. It tells you. I may be wrong, but I'm saying that to the extent that I've showed you where fuel is being siphoned from tracks that have been okayed by Standards Authority, by NPA, to say, go and do your distribution, and then they go and stop somewhere, and then they offload some of the fuel at an unapproved way, in an unapproved manner, to unapproved people. And then the question I asked the other time is that, we are not too sure what they will do to your fuel after they have finished dislodging. If you can find that old video where people were dislodging about two days ago, just play that video from Yamransa. Play that video so we, people can appreciate what I'm talking about. ECG has dealt with this matter or started a full-scale investigation into the matter. But then for the fuel I showed you from Yamransa and the people were, and I said that if you're a fuel tanker operator, you are in trouble. I was expecting the MPA to say something. I was expecting COPEC to say something. I was expecting the Ghana Standards Authority to say something. This was two days ago. I showed you videos. People had been sent, have been sent with fuel and they were, they, it was being siphoned. Yamransa in the central region, my home region. It was being siphoned. When you turn at the Yamransa Junction, you're going towards Asebu on the, that Asin Road, the Fosu Road. It, it's happening there on a daily basis. And there was a police vehicle. I showed you that there was a police vehicle that came around. They didn't come around to arrest anybody. They came around Johnny's to take their right. portion of the thing. The police has not written a statement about it. The Ghana Standards Authority has not written a statement about it. The MPA has not written a statement about it. COPEC has not written a statement about it. And they have still not gone too far because I, I, I always say it here that if I take a video, some we have seen people threatening others in videos with guns and knives and all of that, and the police have swiftly moved to go and arrest people. Nobody gave their location, but the police, I say if the police wants to pick you up, they will pick you up because they know where you are. If our Bureau of National Investigations or National Investigation Bureau wants to pick you up, they know where to find you. I have told you where the thing is. Have we gone there to even intercept the people who investigate? Does it create an impression that official dom knows about it and yet has kept quiet about it? Because people were telling me that, oh, this is no news. It's been happening. It's been happening. It's been happening. So should it go on? And that is our attitude as a country, as a people. You see somebody doing something, but you say, Charlie, that thing they do is no good. Or if they catch you, who go catch him? You are there with him. You know that what he's doing is wrong. You are not arresting him. You are not cautioning him. You are not stopping him. But you say, Charlie, if they catch you, who is coming to catch him? Who is coming to catch the person? This one happened. The siphoning will be fuel. I'm not chaining me. I'm not distraught. No, I'm not chaining me, me, me. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. Yeah, we're sitting pretty at number one news and current affairs in Ghana. We've been there at number one. We're just chilling at number one. That's all we do. Johnny's bite. We win. We just win. We just deliver results. Scorecard. Speaking of which, take me to Siga. Former General Secretary of the New Patriotic Party, a man who has worked through the party structures and ranks to get to that uh, General Secretaryship role. Look at what they are doing to people's fuel. Look, just look at it. He has been appointed as the Acting Director General of SIGA. SIGA. SIGA is the body that manages all our state-owned institutions from Gayhawk to PBC to National Theatre to... All those places, FDA, all of them. Siga is supposed to be supervising them to deliver excellently, to declare profit and not losses. 
John Boydou is the new man there. Congratulations to John Boydou. Maybe he can do what Stephen Asamoah Boateng couldn't do at, as Director General of SIGA. Maybe he can do what Ambassador Boateng couldn't do as Director General of SIGA. But John, my namesake, let me tell you, you have inherited a huge problem because I didn't even realize when Ambassador Boateng decided to leave the place. But you have inherited a huge task. I, I can tell you that on authority. Gihok is one big problem that is a ticking time bomb. The place is going down and down and down and down. Gihok. Where its chief executive officer can just wake up one day and sack people without recourse to, uh, uh, we are due process. It just sacks people. Now they are begging the people to come back to work. They are sending them text messages to come back to work. The people have been home for months. They have not worked, but we have paid them monies. Gihok. Now the people are in court with Gihok. Snit took Gihok to court. GRE had cause to write to NIB Bank to say, we'll garnish your account if you do not pay us that money. Metropolitan uh, Insurance Company Limited, they say you have been deducting tier three of your workers. You have not paid. And it's so embarrassing. Suppliers, they bring ethanol to Gihok and they come and take it back because of just one person who is running down the place along with his acolytes and cohorts who have come there. Recently, they put a party table at Gihok and they say, come and register for your party card. I said, Jesus Christ. State institution. Kwame Nkrumah's own Gihok. It is being run down. It's not the only one who. PBC. PBC used to lead the pack for Ghana Club 100 awards. PBC has been run down. PBC is not even in the 99th position of Ghana Club 100. For the recent one that was held. But the top executive of PBC, they want to become MPs. So, John, you have inherited something. I hope and wish that you will not be a partisan, but you will be very professional. I don't know why Ambassador Boatin left. Johnny's right. Maybe he was pressed down himself. I don't know why he left. Because the truth of the matter is that if he, if he had to leave, if he had to leave because he was frustrated, then there's a problem. Take, for example, what's happening at the National Theatre. Take, for example, so was the minister aware of the fact that the board was going to go to the president contrary to the fact that the government has said that we won't give post-retirement contracts to go and say that we couldn't find anybody who is more suitable, so we give the executive director a contract extension did they inform the minister, Dr. Awa, about it? And is that why Dr. Awa is refusing to go to the National Theatre to meet the staff of the National Theatre? It's a question I'm asking. I'm only asking questions. Show me the U.S. Treasury Secretary, the first ever female Treasury Secretary of the, U uh, the United States. Johnny's right. And she's traveling economy. She's not traveling business class or first class. As for our people, if it is not first class and it is not business class, forget, they won't travel. Oh, yes, our big people. We, we don't have money. We are going to borrow money. The people we are going to borrow money from, they have their top executive flying, not in chartered flights, not in private jets, but their people are going on through, uh, what do you call it? Economy class. And then our people who go and borrow, they are busy doing chartered flights, business class, and first class. It's painful. Oh. The secretary to the treasury in the United States. The secretary to the treasury in the United States. A respected economist. I'll show you the, the, the picture in a bit. I'll just show you the picture in a bit. How we, who are broke and poor, who have borrowed to the tune of $31.1 billion from China over the years. And that is why China is putting uh, a spanner in the works for us in trying to get the approved. That's the woman right there. Johnny right Bunch. there in economic class. Janet Yellen. Right there in economic class. 
Can our leaders go in economic? Because our media be honorable. Me and the honorable, Jimmy. I'm a big man. Bossu, 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 show Benoko. That's what Shatawale sang. Even from their, their places of abode, cantonments, Roman Ridge, all those places close here, they are using motorcade and V8s, strobe lights, and disturbing everybody. Meanwhile, they don't have any money of their own. All they do is go and borrow. Even the V8 is, is loan. It was bought with the loan. Simple. And Jetia, look at the big woman. Big woman sitting in that plane, even reading documents. Otherwise, they will take handbag with them and go and even sleep on top. Mm. Do, you, do you remember how much the green bag that Mr. Foriata took to Parliament to present the budget with costs? Do you remember the green bag I showed you? I showed you how much you got about 4,000 pounds. Just to go and read the budget for an economy that is receding. The economy that is, is, is on a reverse gear at top speed. Eh? Their economy is not reversing at top speed, though. Ours is doing that, but we have space to bring a 4,000 pound bag to come and present the budget. And sometimes you look at the people in opposition, and then you come to when they gave me to government and what came over them. Do they have the people, interest of the people? Jenna Jelen, that's her. Google her name. Read about her. Secretary to the Treasury. Read her. I'll show you an example of somebody who has worn my heart over the years. And I'm sure that government officials, Oliver, uh, uh, indulge me. This one is about a two, three minutes video. That's our last video. Noella Weala, the lioness of life. Africa, she likes to call herself. She's a musician, a philanthropist, an entrepreneur. You know the government had promised to build us theaters in all the regions of the country. The government has not done it. The government again promised that we're going to have recording studios across the country to record music for musicians at subsidized rates. It has not happened. The government said that we're going to build one ultramodern theater somewhere. It has not happened. They said Creative Arts Fund. I don't know what, where it is. And I don't know if all these things will happen before 2024. Because even Agenda 111, which is supposed to be up and running now, which we are supposed to walk into and get good health care because we can't afford to pick our, our, our passports and travel out of the country because even passports are hard to come back in this country. We, we are not complaining about it. And that is why I'm paying that the National Theatre has been left in the state in which it is, where the numerical staff strength has dropped drastically where people are working over time for 60 Ghana cities. The carpenter is collapsing on the job because he's the only carpenter doing office work and building sets. And people being moved from where they originally can perform as professionals to places or new places and all of that. The National Theatre is a problem. But Noella Wiala has shown the example. She knows that her people in the North will forever be ignored. She knows that her people in the north will forever not be taken care of. So she has decided not to be in Accra, Kumasi, Tamale, uh, Takradi, wherever it is. She has gone to be with her people. And this is what she's doing. Play the video. Johnny's Vice. Hi, guys. So this is Fonsi. And this is my uncle, Uncle Sumaila, also known as Chupin. Chupins. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. <laughs> and uh, he's roofing our behind the stage um, office. And uh, we have the Chantier Dance Group and the uh, Fonsi Drama Club. Yeah, so they'll, in fact, they'll be using here a lot. But this is our entertainment, our official main big stage entertainment center. We are trying our best to brighten our corner for this festive season. Yes, this is phase two. We are the art center, Fonsi. And I just want to say a very big thank you to all the community members in the Hall of Fulci. They have been very supportive. They come out in their numbers to support in whichever way that they can. And I am very, very happy. 
So this is what we have been up to since we got home. It has been a very, 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 very busy uh, weeks, days, but we are still on. We are still going. And this is phase two. We keep brightening our corner. So no matter where you are, no matter what you do, just keep brightening your corner. Your corner is your corner. Whether it's a one corner or two corner. Keep the motivation going. Keep positive vibes. Work on going. That's Weala. I love her to bits. I love her music. Johnny's I love right. her spirit. And I love what she's doing. Your MP could have never. Your DC or MC could have never. You're busy interested in being called MP, uh, 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 honorables. Your minister could have never. Johnny's your fa favorite CEO could have never. This is Weala rallying her people to build what they think can make their lives better because the state has failed to build that for the people. Look at the vast land. This is communal labor personified, and they are putting everything there just to have their own taste of what a national theater should be like. Johnny's right. This is good for me, and I applaud Weala and the team for doing this. I've seen Sarkodie's exhibition as well. It tells you one thing, that when the state fails, the people will take their destinies into their hands. A classic example is when the water, the spillage, the irresponsible spillage of uh, the VRA happened in, in the Mepe and Volta region and those other places. The people did not take their donations to the government to go and give to the people. Because they know that when they give their donation to the government and the officials, it will get to the people. So they brought it to private media houses like us and other media houses or they took it there themselves for us to go and present it. It tells you that the people are gradually losing their faith and trust and hope in the system. And if the people lose their faith and trust and hope in the system, there is a problem. Good morning.